Thanks, Marcy. Now, in some parts of the country, spring arrives with the first tulips, or the first robin. But here in San Francisco, we know it's springtime when an anonymous young woman performs her ritual rooftop dance to the spring, naked as the proverbial jaybird. Dharma, you gotta see this. My favorite story of the year, Marcy. Mine too, Dad. Now, let's go to Chopper Dan, our eye on the sky. Dan, any sign of our goddess of spring? Not yet, Ted, but you can bet I'll be here till I run out of fuel. <laughs> Hey, Dharma, check it out. They're in our neighborhood. Tape it for me, honey. I'll be right back. <laughs> I celebrate nature's awakening from her winter slumber. This is my dance to the spring. Dharma! <laughs> my God, I love this job. This looks like outside, but it isn't outside. It's open. Oh, Dama, your elevator is out of order, and there's grass in your apartment. Long explanation or short? Short. It's spring. Long. Uh, every spring, I put a lawn in my apartment. Longer. OK. Uh, well, when I was seven, I had this man. Long enough. <laughs> All right, let's let's see the dress that you that you got for the spring ball. Right there. Oh, well, actually, it's rather nice. But you just had to come over and check anyway, huh? Well, you probably thought I was going to show up in a coconut bra and hula skirt, huh? Crossed my mind. Crossed my mind too. <laughs> oh, it's a worm. Oh no. <laughs> so, did you uh, see me dancing on the news this morning? Oh, God, it was you. Yeah, hey, did you tape it? Because Gray kind of froze up. No, no, I didn't. Dama, I, I, I realize this is a silly question, but you, you will keep that on at the country club, won't you? That's not a silly question. No, I only dance naked to celebrate the yearly renewal of our Mother Earth. Uh-huh. And that's done with now? Oh, yeah, nothing left to do now but to make hot monkey love to your son on my living room lawn. I am great sport yes, for you, you are. are. Yeah. So, um, what do you do with this spring fling? Oh, the usual cocktails, dining, and the, the annual ballroom dance contest. So you just chow down, lick her up, and just boogie, oogie, oogie till you just can't boogie no more. As a matter of fact, that's what the engraved invitation read. <laughs> I will see you there, dear. Oh, wait a second, though. I, I, I've never been in a dance contest. How do we enter? You don't. Why not? Because I said so. Longer. Well, ballroom dancing, Dharma, requires discipline and years of training. It's something you simply haven't been exposed to. Well, wait a minute now. Well, How hard it, uh, can it be? No, I don't want it. Now we're oh! Oh! <laughs> Aren't you glad I put grass on my floor? <laughs> Elevator's out again. <laughs> okay. Dharma, why is there grass in the apartment? Because it's spring. Hey, I want to talk to you about this ballroom dance contest. There's grass on the floor. Yeah. How come we're not going to enter the contest? I didn't think it was your kind of thing. Dharma, all over the floor in our apartment, there's uh, grass. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I put it there. Come on, let's enter. It'll be fun. Oh, Dharma, I've been in this contest before. It's really competitive. It's not fun at all. Well, that's just because you've never entered with me. It's <laughs> under the sofa. <laughs> Don't change the subject. Now, come on, dance with me. What do you think? Can I play golf on it? <laughs> the contest. Focus. Oh, sure, why not? Oh, good, thank you. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> what? You're worse than your mother. 
Okay, first thing I'm gonna teach you is a very basic cha-cha. Oh, I know cha-cha. I know cha-cha. One, two, cha-cha-cha. Boom, cha la 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 boom, cha la la Three, four, cha-cha-cha. Boom, cha la 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 boom, cha la 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 boom, 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 cha la 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 boom, cha boom, cha Are you done? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, now I'm done. Dharma, do you want to learn this or not? Sorry. Okay, now I'll lead. When do I lead? You never lead. Well, who made up that rule? I don't know. Sir Edgar Ballroom. <laughs> now, look, I know we're doing this for fun, but I don't want to look like a complete idiot out there. All right, I'll be serious. Thank you. One, two, cha cha cha. Serious. Dharma. That's my name. Cha cha cha. Don't wear it out. Cha cha cha. One. Cha cha cha. Four. Cha cha cha. Oh man, I feel like a dorky lesbian on a bad first date. <laughs> hey, where's the lawn? I brought grow lights. We got rid of it. So Dharma could practice for her dance contest. Contest? You entered a contest? It's no big deal. I will not calm down. Larry, no one told you to calm down. I cannot believe my daughter is going to compete in some contest. Larry, calm down. I will not calm down. Look, I know you don't approve. But I'm going to do it anyway, so let's not argue, okay? Dharma, all your life we've taught you that competition is wrong. Yeah. When we compete, we don't complete. Oh, come on. <laughs> you guys, it's just a dance contest. There's no such thing. It's just a contest. Competition is the source of all the evil the world has ever suffered. What do you think makes a Mussolini a Genghis Khan? Maybe their parents didn't let them compete in a dance contest. <laughs> do you hear your daughter? She's abandoning everything we've ever taught her. You taught me to question authority, Larry. I didn't mean me. I met Nixon! I can't talk to her, Abby. What is so wrong with me wanting to win one contest? Well, I don't understand why you would want to. Come on, Abby. I have never won anything in my whole life. Remember that recycling fair when I was 10 and I made that solar-powered can masher all by myself? Yeah, and you got a blue ribbon for that. Everybody got a blue ribbon. Even that weird kid who ate cellophane and said, look, I'm recycling. <laughs> well, that way every child felt proud. There's nothing to feel proud about, Abby. He ate cellophane. <laughs> look, I started out doing this dance thing for fun, but now I really want to win. Okay, all right. If that's your decision, I guess. Good luck with the dance contest, sweetie. Thank you. Plus, I'm going to prove Kitty I'm not a Claude. Did she call you a Claude? Get off me, big Claude. That's what she said. <laughs> Jane, turn on the music. Mm -hmm. Good, you're pretty good. <laughs> well, you don't know about me, don't you? When I was 17, I danced on that Sullivan. Oh, you're kidding. Mm -mm. You liked it so much, you put me on the show. <laughs> wow, have you been practicing? No get to Carnegie Hall by asking directions. Dharma, we're still doing this for fun, right? Montgomery, 1984 junior division runner-up. Hi, Cheryl. Sign us up. We're gonna win. We're just gonna have fun. He's gonna have fun. I'm gonna kick butt. <laughs> okay, terrific. Well, fill this out. If you'd like to practice, the ballroom's open till 10. <laughs> what the hell are they doing? <laughs> dancing. What the hell were we doing? <laughs> I'm pretty 
good, huh? Yeah, but look at him. It's all about winning that stupid little cup. They're not having any fun. It's a cup? I want a cup. You never told me about a cup. I want a cup. <laughs> so I'm going to let it go. We're never going to beat them. Wait a minute. I know that guy. He dates Kent. Who's Kent? Excuse me. You see that couple right there? They need to be disqualified because he dates our mailman. They're not a real couple. Dharma, it doesn't matter if they're not a real couple. Oh, so if you have a mother-daughter wheelbarrow race, I can just grab any set of ankles and run? <laughs> now, am I the only one who is bothered by how peppy she is? <laughs> I think we need to do a drug test, you know, because I'm thinking steroids or amphetamines, you know, the usual stuff. <laughs> we don't do that here. <laughs> what kind of country club won't run a simple urine test? <laughs> what you doing? Just looking at some old pictures of Dharma. Remember this one from Cesar Chavez summer camp? Honey, that wasn't a camp. They just let us pick grapes with the migrant workers. And why did I write my name in my underwear? I don't know, Larry. Here's one of her dancing all alone in this big empty field. Oh, honey, that was the Us Festival. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll... Look how young Ozzy Osbourne looks. And look how happy Dharma was. Yeah. She wasn't trying to win some contest. She was just happy to spin around in circles until she threw up all over my sandals. Lara, did you ever stop to think that maybe we should have let her win something? What? She was so good at so many things. And all she ever heard from us is everybody's equal. And why does she have to feel superior to someone in order to feel good about herself? I don't know, Lear. Why have you kept this all these years? World's greatest dad. That's different. How? I will not calm down. <laughs> See, see, if we can do that, we can win. Dharma, they're on ice skates. So we'll wear roller skates. You can't wear roller skates. I'll wear a long dress. Nobody will know. <laughs> right. We need a money move, OK? What? You know, a little sizzle, because face it, we ain't got the steak, baby. Dharma, we're never going to be able to pull off something like that. You never know till you try. Now, come on, throw me up in the air, and let's just see what happens. No. Why not? Because I love you. If you love me, you'll throw me. Dharma, this is insane. Fine, then just catch me. What? Was the sun in your eyes? <laughs> Don't you both look adorable? Next to them, we look like big, fat dog do. Uh, where's Larry? You know, Larry, he thought this contest would corrupt his daughters. Mistake! Mistake! <laughs> no, see, we're, uh, doing this for the fun. Hey, you, what stinks? Oh, must be your dancing! you realize with their little mistake, you could actually win this thing? Yeah, I, I guess we could. Don't. No. What are you talking about? I got a thousand bucks on Tweety Bird and the Fancy Man. You bet against us? Take a dive. I'll cut you in. Dama, don't you look lovely, dear? Oh, thank you. Wow. Kitty, I must say you Thank look... you. Now, I, um... Now, this is a bit of a silly question, but I understand in your routine you do a lot of twirling about and you are wearing... Underwear? You know. Mm -hmm. That's not a silly question. <laughs> and now, our final contestants, Greg and Daharma Montgomery. <laughs> Let us go! Hey, Tom. I'm counting on you, son. Listen, why don't we just go up and have a good time? No one gets on the Wheaties box by having a good time. Nobody gets on the Wheaties box. God, I feel like such a loser. <laughs> Don't we get anything? A ribbon, a certificate of participation, anything? No, those are only for the top 12 couples. 
Yeah, well, we'll get them next year. No, honey. No, we won't. Don't feel bad, Greg. It wasn't entirely your fault. It wasn't any of my fault. See, now you're blaming me? All you had to do was stand in one place and catch me as I floated into your arms. Floated? You landed on me like a piano. We'll just see about that. Oh, Dharma, no. Ready, Freddy? No. Here comes Ginger. Dharma, no! Okay, Greg, you can look. I'm sorry, look at what? Oh, come on, the blonde with the legs and the rack. You had to see that. <laughs> oh, it's her. I <gasps> didn't notice. It's okay, Greg, I'm securing our relationship. I mean, I know that men are visually stimulated. It's a biological fact. All right, she's pretty. So if you were single, that'd be someone you'd go out with? I'm not single. But if? Okay, if I were single, maybe she'd be somebody I'd go out with. That's a man, Greg. <laughs> Was it worth it? Was it worth all that just to set me up? Yep, do it again in a heartbeat. Hey, Jeff! <laughs> what are you doing? Random act of kindness. Leader maid's coming. Oh, it's kind of nice. <laughs> hey, just trying to be a good neighbor. That's not your car? No, just a random act of kindness. Well, it's against the law. You can't put quarters in other people's meters. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How is it against the law to help somebody? Don't know, don't care. <laughs> oh, but look at this car. Look, it's got a baby seat in the back, and right now the mother's probably struggling with a crying, hungry baby, you know, and she's stuck in line because somebody's writing a check for $1.98. Don't you hate that? I hate that. And, you know, she knows the meter's running out, and she's just praying for a miracle, and you, A. Semetsky, is it Amy? Ann? <laughs> Anyway, you and I could do that miracle. Still don't think so. Wow, now I know what the A stands for. You can't put quarters in other people's meters. Yes, I can, A. No, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Random act of kindness. Tom, don't. All right, now I'm writing you a ticket. Random act of kindness. That's another one. Karma. Random act of kindness. Is that another? Nice handwriting. A ticket. She gave me a ticket. Ow! Well, eight tickets. You're lucky we talked her out of the assault charge. I didn't assault her. I gave her a hug. Yeah, I know. Random act of kindness, and thank God meter maids don't carry guns. Well, I'm not paying these because they're wrong. Darmy, you have to pay them. Excuse me, even you said that the law was wrong. I know, but you can't fight City Hall. I'm here to fight City Hall. Third floor. Thank you. Number 37. Yes, that's me. Number 37. Hello. I'm Dharma Finkelstein Montgomery, and I am here to fight City Hall. I'm sorry. I got these tickets, and Second I just... Second floor, room 206. Uh, and they'll take care of everything? Second floor, 206. Thank you. 54. 54. No, 54, that's me. Hi, I'm Dharma Finkelstein Montgomery, and uh, I got these tickets. Cash check or charge? Oh, no, I can't pay them because Sixth I... Sixth floor, room 612. <laughs> okay, and they'll take care of everything? Sixth floor, room 612. <laughs> 129, 129. Okay, hi, yeah, 129, that's me. Um, I got these tickets and I'm not going to pay them. 
Reason for financial hardship? Why? No, 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 no. There's no financial hardship. Second floor, room 206. No, 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 no. No, 206 is the cash checker charge lady, and I was already there. Do you have your receipt? No, she didn't give me a receipt. Eighth floor, room 891. Uh, I don't need a duplicate receipt. I am here to change an unjust law. <laughs> Building permit? I don't even have. No, you see what it was? It was just a random act. <laughs> no, I'm not homeless. I just, I just have these tickets. <laughs> Cash checker charge. <laughs> You okay, Pete? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> hey, Valentine's Day's coming up. What are you and Dharma gonna do? We'll go away for the weekend, or maybe just, you know, go out for a nice dinner. That sounds nice. <laughs> Can you hand me that uh, affidavit? Oh, sure. Thanks. <laughs> are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. What's going on with you and that girl? What's her name? Eileen? There is no Eileen. I made her up. But you said you, you met her parents and, and that they hated you. They would have. Hey, how'd it go? Oh, uh, well, let's see. I got, a, I got a fishing license. I can open a bakery. And um, as soon as I get this, be notarized, I'm legally blind. <laughs> ah. Honey, are you okay? Oh, you pet. I, I am okay. <laughs> Why do you ask? I'll uh, make you some tea. Oh no, you're not. you're gonna make the tea, and then you'll tell me I gotta go to a different husband to get the cup. <laughs> no. I know, and then you'll call my number two million and four two million four. Hey, where's Dharma? I gotta talk to her. Can't talk to her right now. <laughs> She's insane. Oh, wait. <laughs> so what's new? My life is empty and has no meaning. I asked you what's new. Just leave me alone, Jane. If it's any consolation, my life sucks, too. Yeah? That does kind of help. Listen, Dr. Laura hung up on me, so let me ask you. If your boyfriend is finally up for his parole, and he deliberately blows the hearing, he's found someone else, am I right? Probably. Huh? Great. There goes my Valentine's Day conjugal visit. How did you get another ticket? Uh, well, I thought I was only going to be in there for a few minutes, but then when I came out, it was right there on my car because no one put any quarters in my meter. <laughs> now, here's the really funny part. Look who gave it to me. A. Semetsky. For a while, for a split second there, I actually thought I was going to go on a shooting spree, <laughs> but the line for the gun permits was too long, and I totally get why. <laughs> it's not like we don't know each other. Did sleep together once. But it wasn't great. Didn't make us barf. <laughs> All right, let's get married. <laughs> Dharma, what, why don't you just pay the tickets and forget about it? No, never, because I didn't do anything wrong. It's the law that's wrong. I just can't get anybody to listen to me. If you want to fight the law, you should probably just go to the Board of Supervisors meeting. They hear public complaints once a week. You knew this? <laughs> and you, you, you didn't tell me? Everybody knows that, right, Pete? <laughs> Pete? They were like brownies, but they didn't have nuts. They had raisins. Let me get this straight. You want to change the official San Francisco treat 
from rice to that thing your mother used to make that you don't remember the name of. Yes. We'll form a committee right away and get started on that. Thank you. Next. I would like books with the following words removed from the public library. <laughs> Rectum. <laughs> Cincher. <laughs> tushy. Next. My name is Xandar Gamma Gamma 3. <laughs> and I bring you a message from the planet Gamma Gamma 3. <laughs> Greetings, people of Next! <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Dharma Montgomery, and first of all, I just want to let you know how much I appreciate how difficult your job is here. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I guess most of the requests you get are kind of out there. Um, but my problem is very simple. I am a parking meter fairy. <laughs> and all I can... That's it! I've had a few lunatics coming in here week after week. The airport's too far from my house. Just because Mom's dead doesn't mean we're not carpooling. <laughs> look! Look! I found Tony Bennett's heart! <laughs> well, you know what? I quit. You can all go... <laughs> Let me through. I'm a doctor. Thank you. Hello. 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 So, what's the big surprise? Well, uh, Dharma wants to tell you herself. Oh. Greg, do I hear the pitter patter of little feet? No, no, you don't. Oh. You know what I hear a lot? <laughs> I hear this metallic hum. Kind of sounds like a little factory that makes metal shoes. <laughs> no, Finkelstein, she meant a baby. Dharma's having a baby? No, she's not having a baby. And that's your big announcement. <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for coming. Should we wait for Pete? I haven't been able to reach him. I can't find Jane either. Oh, uh, let's just get started. I have an announcement. We heard. Big deal. <laughs> You told them? I, I, go ahead. Okay. Well, I guess you probably heard that the guy on the board of supervisors died and they're having a special election to replace him, right? Well, guess who decided to run? Greg? No! <laughs> Me. Oh, Dharma, I'm sorry. I made a genital-based assumption. <laughs> My fellow gyno-American, please forgive me. I forgive you. And don't ever call me that again. <laughs> anyway, I was just trying to change a silly little parking meter law, but before that guy's head even hit the floor, I knew that the universe was trying to tell me something, you know? Get involved, Dharma. Make a difference. Oh, isn't that adorable? <laughs> we have our own little candidate. Edward? I think someone here needs a campaign contribution. Well, how about a hundred? You're not taking me seriously. Oh, good for you, dear. Drive a hard bargain. <laughs> Don't touch their money, Dharma. It's a deal with the devil. Are you calling us the devil? You only want her elected so she'll wage war to support your military-industrial complex. <laughs> San Francisco Board of Supervisors does not wage war. Of course not. They send the young boys. Where have all the flowers gone? Answer me that. You smoke them, Pinklesteen. <laughs> all right, now there's no need for us to raise our voices. I mean, my goodness, it's not as if she's going to win. Well, it's not about winning, Mother. It's about participating and making your voice heard. Excuse me. You don't think I can win? I think you should win If all things were fair But uh, people like you are better than the kind of people who win I mean I know what you mean No, I, uh, no let me try I again Stop I... now, son I can't believe that you don't think that I'm a serious candidate No, I believe you're serious I think you just don't understand how difficult this is Dad, t tell her what it takes to win a seat on the Board of Supervisors $78,400 At least... That's what the last clown cost me. Well, I got news for all of you. 
Not only am I going to win, I don't need your money to do it. Because I'm going to take my message to the people, wherever they are. The, the shopping malls, the supermarkets, the movie theaters, those weird little stores where you get lottery tickets and beef jerky. That <laughs> is where you will find San Francisco's next city supervisor, Dharma Freedom Finkelstein Montgomery. <laughs> oh, 78 thousand dollars and now he's dead <laughs> so you think we did the right thing yeah I do so how about a kiss what am I your whore <laughs> I've got my application, my supporting documentation, and my filing fee. All I need you to do is just put your stamp right there, and I'm officially a candidate for the Board of Supervisors. Second floor, room 206. What? Room 206, second floor. All right. You know what? Why don't we play a little game here? Okay? Let's say I take these documents, and I go to room 206, second floor, and then they send me to room 514, and then they send me to 901, and then they send me to France, where they wear the fancy pants. <laughs> but finally, I'm a candidate, and I run, and I run, and I run, and woohoo, I win! First day on the job. Good morning, Supervisor Dharma. Nice briefcase. Thank you, my husband gave it to me. What would you like to do today, Supervisor Dharma? Well, I think I would like to fire my friend, Mr. D. Abbott. <laughs> Comprende? Good luck. Hi, I'm Dharma Montgomery, and I'm running for the Board of Supervisors. Hi, I'm Dharma Montgomery, and... Hi, I'm Dharma... Hi, I'm Dr. Montgomery. Please don't slam the door in my face. I'm running for the Board of Supervisors, and I would just like you to take a moment to listen to what I have to say, and if you agree with it, I would really appreciate your vote on Election Day. Vajnik? Uh, I'm sorry? Vajnik Papas Dobny? And if you agree, I would really appreciate your vote on Election Day. What is your position on child care? Oh, I definitely think the government should play a role in child care. Yeah. Great. Justin, this nice lady's going to watch you for a while while Mommy goes to the grocery store. Um, okay, ma'am, 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 lady. And as your supervisor, it would be my job to help you in any way that I can. Oh, terrific. Um, that sounds great. Okay, uh, you know what would help? In about ten minutes, there's going to be a lot of policemen here. Uh, what you could do is come in and sit with me on my couch and say, we've been here all day. I'm sorry. Have I come at a bad time? <laughs> you were right, Greg. What was I thinking? You can't give up after one bad day. Oh, Greg, you have no idea what it's like out there. People won't even open the door long enough to take a flyer. And you know what they do if you slip it under the door? They slip it back. Sometimes with spit on it. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, Larry. What's up? No, I'm pretty sure you called me. <laughs> hi, Abby. What? Oh, turn on Channel 7. Oh, we'll call you right back. While the special election to fill the late Supervisor Dawson's seat is some weeks off, a few candidates have already begun campaigning. Um, well, I'll be honest with you. I'm a newcomer at this, but I love this city, and... I'm just going to go out there and knock on doors and tell people that Dharma Montgomery is someone who cares about them and who wants to make a difference in their lives. Oh. <laughs> no, honey, that was good. I feel that as the widow of Supervisor Dawson, well, kind of the widow, because he was definitely leaving his wife for me. <laughs> I'm like the heir to the throne. <laughs> Greetings. I mean you no harm. Well, this certainly will be a special election. Now let's take a look at our weekend weather. 
That's it? It's just me and those two? You got a shot. Oh, I've got a <laughs> No, I totally agree, Larry. Xandar is gonna be tough to beat. <laughs> oh, can you hang on one sec? Okay. Improve your karma, vote for Dharma. <laughs> oh, hey, kitty. What's shaking? Yeah, I know. It does look like I got a shot at it, doesn't it? Shocked the $50 panties right off your butt, didn't I? <laughs> hey, Dharma. Guess what we did for Valentine's Day? Oh, now you want to make a donation to my campaign. How much are we talking about? Uh, 78 grand was yesterday's price, my friend. Uh -huh. Maybe we should come back and tell her a little later, sugar. Sugar? What am I, your whore? Journal of the American Bar Association cutting out pictures of hunky lawyers like you. Oh, don't be embarrassed. All little girls do that. <laughs> now kiss me. Ah, show me the plaque first. <laughs> oh, honey, honey, you want me to help you with that because it's kind of tricky. Maybe for an ordinary man, but not for federal prosecutor of the year, Western Region Division 2, Section, Section B. <laughs> We're here live being undressed by award-winning federal prosecutor Gregory Montgomery. Mr. Montgomery, you clearly have the talent to be an adult film star. What made you choose the law? Oh, you know, the usual reasons. The groupies, the complimentary legal pads. There you have it, folks. Behind every great man, nookie, and free office supply. You know, I can't, I can't even remember when I first decided to become a lawyer. <sighs> Probably not enough blood in your head. <laughs> now, isn't it, isn't it strange? I mean, a lot of people have asked me that question, but I never really thought about it. Why start now? Here, honey. Let me show you a little trick with these buttons. <laughs> Ta-da. I've spent my entire adult life doing something, and I don't know why. Ta-da! You know, if anybody but you had asked me why I became a lawyer, I'd give them some glib answer and that'd be that. Fine. Pretend I'm someone else. Hi, I'm Patricia Pillowhead. Quick, take me before my husband, Mr. Pillowhead, gets home. No, 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 no. Don't let me off the hook. I gotta, I gotta figure this out. Stand by, fellas. We've hit a snag. <laughs> What's going on, honey? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I'm gonna make some coffee. All right, boys, smoke them if you got them. <laughs> Come to bed soon? You still want to know why I became a lawyer? 
Sure, of course. Well, I don't know. Oh, well, that's okay. It was a trick question. Gotcha. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, because I never felt worthy of being loved, and if I were successful and important, I would deserve that love. You thought people loved lawyers? <laughs> See? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. My whole life doesn't make any sense. Hey, how can you say that? You haven't even lived your whole life. Yeah, well, I... I, I guess that's true. Yeah, I mean, for all we know, life doesn't even make sense until the end. You know, like jokes. Like right now, you're just a guy sitting in a bar with a duck on his head. Exactly. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm just beginning. It's, it's, it's almost like, like, like today is the first day of the rest of my life. Like the poster. What poster? Never mind. Dharma, do you, do you realize what an opportunity this is? I mean. Look at all those windows. Behind every one of them are people stumbling through life with no idea why they're doing what they're doing. I think they know why they're doing what they're doing. Oh, you go, girl! Girls! I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Big breakthrough, your whole life is a lie, you became a lawyer as a misguided yeah, detective. Yeah, yeah, anyway, now. <laughs> thanks to you, I I finally realized that. <laughs> you wanna talk about this inside? Yeah, yeah, probably better. <laughs> Obstacles. Huh? It's not popsicles, it's obstacles. <laughs> Although the obstacles could be popsicles if they were really big and in your way. <laughs> Craig, have you slept at all? 32 years, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. What you doing? Reading all your books on spiritual enlightenment. Really? This stuff is incredible. Do you realize that that most of these guys have spent their entire lives figuring out who they are and what their true purpose was? Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Unbelievable. I mean, if you buckle down, it shouldn't take more than a month. <laughs> Did you really read all of these books? Well, I, I skimmed them. I got the gist. <laughs> Walden, Simplify, Tibetan Book of the Dead, We're All Gonna Die, Be Here Now, well, duh. <laughs> then, uh, next time I'm gonna read the Bible. Well, let me save you some time. First half, don't mess with God. Second half, be nice to people. Thank you. That's a couple of days right there. I think I need some coffee. Okay. I'm gonna, uh, try some meditation. Oh. Okay, I see how that can be helpful. Celia, it's probably for you. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello, Dharma. I'm fine, thank you. Well, I'm glad you're fine as well. How can I help you? Well, I certainly appreciate you respecting my wishes and calling before you drop by. However, now would, would not be a good time. Because... I have guests. <laughs> what do you mean, where are they? Where are you? <laughs> Come in. Oh, use the door, Dama. Didn't want to bump into all your guests on their way out. Oh, very clever. Well, do. Oh, are these just for anyone? Apparently. Mm. <laughs> So, mm. to what do I owe the honor? Why can't a daughter-in-law just drop by and say how do you do? Because we are not mountain folk. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to give you a little heads up about Greg. What about him? Well, last night, 
he had what's probably a very normal, healthy, spiritual awakening. And now he's peeling off the layers of Greg Montgomery that we're familiar with and replacing him with a whole brand new guy. What I'm saying is, how can we be sure of anything? This table, it's only a table because we call it a table. It's only here because we all agree it's here. So you're against Casual Fridays? I'm against living an unexamined life. So you're for Casual Fridays? Sorry I'm late. What I miss? Well, let's see. Mr. Claiborne called the meeting to order, Mr. Webster brought up the issue of Casual Fridays, and then Buzz Aldrin here took off for the moon. I I'm glad you're here, Pete. Now, nobody help him. Pete. What is this? Who's there? You know, there is a very simple way of looking at this, okay? Greg is like a caterpillar who spent his whole life in a cocoon, and now he's emerging as a beautiful butterfly. So he's gay? <laughs> Don't you ever wonder why we're doing this? Why we all became attorneys? No. no. Oh, come on! People, isn't it because we wanted to put on this big fancy mask and march around? Hey, look at me! I'm an attorney! I'm an attorney! <laughs> Not for long. So, he's just trying to find himself. Exactly. Nothing to worry about. Well, I think we all feel better, if I can speak for the group. <laughs> Mrs. Darma's phone. <laughs> Are you in for Mr. Pete? Thank you, Celia. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, Pete, what's up? Oh, that's bad. Ooh, oh, that's really bad. Okay, I'll be right over. What's wrong? What makes you think something's wrong? Gotta go. <laughs> oh, that's handy. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Do you still consider this a desk? What do you think, honey? Exactly. That's my point. It's all subjective. <laughs> Hello? Hey, look at that. Your desk flipped, too. Everything's fine. He's just going to go home and take a little break. You know what? She's right. I quit. I, I didn't say that. No, you didn't have to. I got you. I quit. Uh, look, Mrs. Montgomery, don't you think you should let him make this decision? It is his decision. Well, then why are you telling him to quit? I'm not. <laughs> I didn't. He's not quitting. No, no, no. I'm out of here. I quit. <laughs> if his mother calls, this was not my fault, okay? Standing in the rain. I am experiencing the rain, and the rain is experiencing me. Greg, those old postage stamps we found in my dad's shed, you didn't lick any of them, did you? I have spent my entire life getting out of the rain because society said, come inside, Greg, it's raining. But why can't it be, it's raining, Greg? Go outside! Because it's raining, Greg! Come inside! I thought you, of all people, would understand. I do. But you're trying to do too much too fast. You think? Yeah, it's okay, though. I mean, look at all you've accomplished. Yesterday, you were Liar of the Year, and now you... Just come inside! Hey, Dr. Luther! The lesbians are watching me now. And I bet they're counting their blessings. 
สิ่งแล้วครับI'm inside. I toweled him off, and I put him to bed, and that is where he has been ever since. Any questions? Are you telling me Gregory quit his job and he has been in bed for the last two days? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, if there are no other questions, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> D D Dama. We don't know. We cannot just go. We have to handle this crisis. It's not a crisis, Kitty. It's a celebration, really. I mean, Greg is rebirthing himself, <laughs> and we all know how exhausting that can be. You know what they say? There's no epidural during a spiritual rebirth. <laughs> I always thought it was there are no atheists in a foxhole. <laughs> I just want us all to agree that we are going to give Greg our love and support. Okay? No pressure. We have never pressured Gregory. Never. Are you kidding? <laughs> you guys wrapped them tighter than an airport sandwich. <laughs> Don't blame me. I was working. I barely spoke to the boy. <laughs> are you saying this is my fault? No. You're a perfect mother and a beautiful woman. <laughs> Dharma, do you have anything stronger than scotch? I don't want to judge, but your drinking could be part of the problem. Hey, wait a minute! I never drank around the boy. I always drank alone. <laughs> okay, I think we may have strayed from the subject. What was the subject? How do you dress yourself in the morning? <laughs> you called a family meeting for that? <laughs> hey, hey, Jane. I just wanted to give you this for Greg. You know. Casey starts chewing on his legs. <laughs> It's very funny. I know. I didn't even have one. I had to go out and buy it. Jane, now is not a good time. <laughs> really? Looks like you have all the ingredients. <laughs> bye, bye, Jane. Bye, bye. I'll be back. I know. <laughs> Look who's up! How you feeling? Wait, can you believe I slept for 14 hours? Oh, yeah, I was there for eight of them. What you watching? Some movie. This guy's from the future, but the movie was made in the 40s, so he's actually from five years ago. Well, I'll be darned. How's your voyage of self-discovery going? Good. Going to a Giants game this afternoon with the guy who brought the new phone books. Another baseball game? Yeah, but today I'm taking my mitt. You know, I would have caught that ball yesterday if I'd had a mitt. Boy, you know, I was worried that you weren't going to be able to unwind and slow down, but look at you go! Do you get the new TV guide? Yes. And the fiddle faddle. Yep. And I also got you a book. It's about how to incorporate spirituality into your everyday life. You know, if you ever choose to have one again. <laughs> I wonder how fiddle faddle would taste in milk. But it's been two months, two months. Yeah, I know. Well, Dharma, it takes as long as it takes. Hey, look who's up. Morning. Anyway, Dharma, the best thing you can do for Greg is be there for him and just give him as much time as he needs to find his true path. Abby. Yeah. Do you know where this week's TV guide is? Here, Larry. Hey, thanks. Oh boy, organic fiddle faddle. Oh. Ow! Ow! Ha! Ha! Good though. Mmm. <laughs> Greg, what are you doing? Fixing my hair. Did you cut it? No, no, I pulled it back in a ponytail. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I, uh, oh, oh. Oh. Pop tarts are done. <laughs> And we're breathing. And we're accepting. 
Oh, screw this. <laughs> oh, hot, hot, good, good, hot, good. All right, mister, here's how it's going to be. I'm going to the store, which, in case you're wondering, is how Pop-Tarts get here. And when I get back, I want you showered and shaved and on some damn road to enlightenment. I don't care which one. This is Garfield. <laughs> Where did you get this? Found it. Uh, half the pages are missing, but that's okay, because it's not really a story. <laughs> No, I'm not gonna dump him. Oh, come on, dump him. Then I'll dump Pete. We'll go do something fun. I thought you and Pete were happy. We are, but if you're gonna be single, I don't want to miss out. We're not breaking up. I love Greg. I love Greg more than anything. Hi, pretty lady. I shouldn't have lost my temper. You know, who am I to tell Greg how long this should take? So you're just gonna let him rot on your sofa like a big wheel of stinky cheese? If, if that's his bliss, I just have to figure out how to get his mother off my back. She's calling me every day. Well, the way I see it, you got two choices. Either you can have her roughed up or you can fake your own death. Either way, I know a guy. <laughs> I'll let you know. Right now, I think I need to go apologize to Greg. Right now? But you promised. All right, one ride on the vibrating pony and then we're leaving. <laughs> the new TV guide and some fiddle faddle. Greg? Dharma? What? What's this? Oh, my God. What? You were right. I wasn't accomplishing anything sitting at home. If I'm really serious about changing my life, I've got to go out into the world and take some chances. I'll call you as soon as I can. I love you. He's gone. Wow. Yeah. Can I have his fiddle faddle? <laughs>with your plan to, um... Oh, what is it exactly? Waste his life. Ah, that's it. I can't believe you'd make such a big deal of inviting us over for dinner and give me nothing but grief. Oh, I just wanted to give you grief. Your mother insisted on serving a meal. <laughs> Greg is not wasting his life. He is on a path to spiritual enlightenment, and I think we should all support him. Fine. Don't you know. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. dear, you need another napkin? Or do you just want to use your Harvard diploma? <laughs> We're family. You don't need to break out the fancy stuff. You know what? I don't need to sit here and take this. Gregory, Gregory, I am sorry. I am sorry. It's just that, that I worry about you. I know how difficult it will be for you to have parents that other people look down on. <laughs> See, honey, it is about you. <laughs> just that you haven't worked in months. People are starting to talk. Tried to cover for you. Told everyone you were at Betty Ford. <laughs> then uh, Bunny Stanton comes back from Betty Ford and makes a complete fool out of me. <laughs> to Bunny. You're here. <laughs> Listen, you guys, Greg is going to figure out what he wants to do. It's just going to take some time. And you're comfortable with bringing home the bacon uh, or whatever it is you people eat? <laughs> That's what you do for someone you love, Edward. I'm sure if you want to take some time off and find another path, Kitty would go out and get a job. <laughs> what is that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Hail now, Edward. Turn into the skin. Kitty goes to work. Hello, I'm Kitty Montgomery. I'm here to work! <laughs> So narrow-minded. God, get off the treadmill for a couple of months and suddenly I'm wasting my life. Greg, you can't let your parents get in your head. 
You're right. You're right. Thank you. You're welcome. Damn it, Dharma, I'm wasting my life. <laughs> Kitty, Edward, get out of there. <laughs> I, got, I gotta go back to work. I gotta do something. Okay, what do you want to do? I don't know. I, whatever it is, it's gotta be important. I, I mean, not that I need recognition so much. I just need a sense of purpose, of serving the greater good. Okay, then you definitely don't want to go back to being a lawyer. I just wish I knew what it was. Craig, you're making this too hard. Just follow your bliss. Find the thing that makes you happy. All the other stuff will take care of itself. Easy for you to say. I can't think of anything that makes me happy. I can think of one thing. <laughs> I don't want to catch you making a living at it. <laughs> Dharma, are you sleeping? Who are you? <laughs> Sleeping? <laughs> Never mind, it can wait till morning. <sighs> what? I figured it out. I know how to make myself happy. <laughs> then why did you wake me? I was thinking about what you said, and all of a sudden, it hit me. What? My bliss. Tell me. Golf. <laughs> Golf? I'm going to spend the rest of my life playing golf. <laughs> little ball with the stick golf that go you know I'm pretty good and I figure if I practice eight hours a day by the time I'm 50 I can go on the senior tour 50 you're 32 18 years plenty of time golf, golf. okay well great thank you so much a lot of wives wouldn't understand this. Oh, well, you can understand that. <laughs> Night. Night. <sighs> okay, you're hosing me, right? <laughs> She's just gonna let you do it? Oh, she wasn't thrilled about it at first, but once she understood this was my bliss, she practically pushed me onto the golf course. The only way Jane had ever pushed me onto a golf course is if we were flying over one in a plane. <laughs> hey, Greg, check it out. How cute am I? Very cute. What, what are you doing here? Well, I decided I had a choice. I could stay at home and complain about being a golf widow, or I could come out here and share your passion. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's terrific. Hey, Jane, how would you feel if I quit my job and just played golf every day? Single. <laughs> Caddy, chef me. Chef me? What do you think? I'd definitely hit it that way. Good call. <laughs> Not sure, Caddy. <laughs> Maple syrup. I believe you had pancakes for breakfast. Yes, that's what I thought. <laughs> Give me your finger. Let me see what you had for breakfast. Just work the camera, please. Four! Dharma, you don't have to yell four on the driving range. Sorry. Never mind! <laughs> All right, Mr. Ball, don't get too comfortable. Here comes Mr. Club. <laughs> Caddy, where'd the ball go? I think it went all the way around the world and came right back here. <laughs> Your loyalty and optimism will be reflected in your tip. Think. All right, you, you just need to keep your head still, honey. Got it. And, and, and keep your left elbow straight. Straight. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, bend your knees like you're sitting on a stool. No, a bar stool. I was doing milking stool. Yeah, I know. Okay, then just take it back nice and easy and shift your weight to your right side. Good. Now, keep your left foot down. Down. Now, now just all the way back. Now follow through nice and easy.
uh, next time you'll want to hold on to the club. How do you chef me? I tried. I really did. I played 18 holes. Whack and walk. Whack and walk. God forbid you should jump in the sand and make a castle. Dharma, let me tell you something about golf. It's a conspiracy to turn precious land and water resources into secret meeting places where rich white fat cats can plot to suppress the masses using golf as a cover. On the other hand, I did tell him to find the thing that makes him happy, you know? Good for you. But are you supposed to stand by your partner when they've clearly lost touch with reality? Wait a second. Has somebody been wearing my codpiece? <laughs> Who would be wearing your codpiece? You never know. <laughs> Come on, you know? I mean, it's golf, big golf, dumb golf, no windmills, no clown's mouth, nothing. Well, honey, you do want a life partner you can admire and respect. I'm gonna have to shave my legs. The hair is coming out right through the tights. Well, Larry, nobody's gonna be close enough to notice. It feels funny. <laughs> Darmy, you know what might cheer you up? Why don't you and Greg come with us to the Renaissance Fair? No, thanks. I've had some bad experiences at the Renaissance Fairs. Really? Yeah, I don't know what happens to the guys who go to those things. Maybe it's the costumes, maybe it's the medieval beer, maybe it's just spending a whole day outside their parents' basements. <laughs> Whatever it is, they're all over you like fridge magnets on a suit of armor. You sure? They're busting an extra hunchbacks for the charity flogging booth. Come on, Abby, help me out. What should I do about Greg? Well, honey, what do you think you should do? Oh, all right. I got it. You don't want to say anything to influence my actions, just like I shouldn't say anything to Greg to influence his actions, right? It's not my place to say. <laughs> Thank you. Where are you going, honey? I'm going to go be a little weasel and tell his mom. <laughs> Golf. Golf. And you are fine with this? It's not for me to say. Really? Just like I wouldn't say anything to you about any action you might take regarding your son's decision to play golf for the rest of his life. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. I'm not saying anything. Then it's good we never had this conversation. <laughs> what the hell just happened? Hey, Dharma. Hey, how was lunch with your parents? Great. Greg, listen, don't take it personally, okay? No matter how much she yells at you, you have to remember that your mother loves you very much. She didn't yell at me. Yell or scowl or threaten to write you out of the will. <laughs> Greg, it's because she loves you. No, my mother didn't say much of anything. My father did most of the talking. Hmm. Well, whatever he said, Greg, it's because he loves you. He offered me a job. Really? I wonder what the thinking was there. I took it. I, I, I mean, I told him you and I needed to talk about it first because we'd have to relocate. Really? That's no problem, honey. I can teach yoga anywhere. Where are we headed? Are you ready? Do I have to get ready? Scotland. I'm sorry, did you say Oakland? <laughs> Oakland? Who moves to Oakland? Scotland. Montgomery Industries does a little North Sea oil business. In Scotland? And here's the best part. I talked to the guy who's leaving the job, and there's nothing to it. You do a little paperwork, you drive to the coast to see if any of the rigs are on fire, and that's it. The rest of the day, you have to yourself in Scotland, the birthplace of golf. Well, that one came around and bit me on the ass. Plus, I'm making a great big pot of haggis. What the hell is haggis? It's sheep's heart and liver, minced up and seasoned with just a hint of lung. And then neatly stuffed back into its own stomach. Yummy. That's not food. That's what happens when circus trains collide. <laughs> Why, it's the national dish of Scotland, lassie. Oh, how about a wee bite? 
Not if it was served up in the glistening Scottish ass of Sean Connery. Fair enough. Can I interest you in some blood pudding? It's another Scottish taste bud tickler made of. Are you ready? Blood! <laughs> what have you been drinking? Scotch. <laughs> Which was invented by the great Scotsman Angus McBarf when his wife told him what was for dinner. <laughs> Are you really planning to eat that stuff? No, I'm serving it to my bonny husband, Gregory. 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 So that he can have a great big bowl of his new life. Sly boots, yeah. Then I won't want to move to Scotland. And if that were to come to pass, then how could it not? That would be his life choice, and I cannot interfere with the life choice of another. <laughs> now dance with me, lassie. <laughs> dance like they got haggis in your pants. Everybody, can I have your attention? Can you get the music? Thanks. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank my wife. I was a little nervous about moving so far away. In fact, I almost changed my mind. But she has worked nonstop <laughs> for the past few weeks to get me in touch with my Scottish roots, the smell of Agus, the sweet drone of a bagpipe. Clan Montgomery, I'm coming home. I can't believe our little girl's moving to Scotland. I'm a little surprised myself. We're gonna miss you, Pumpkin. Oh, I know, but what a wonderful opportunity. See what happens when you don't interfere with the life choice of another Dharma? The universe just gives you a big thumbs up. <laughs> yep, I can feel it. <laughs> Dharma, there's a lot of boiled cabbage left over. Would you mind if I took some for the Renaissance Fair? Sure. Okay. Just what the Renaissance Fair needs, gassy geeks and tights. <laughs> so this is it? You're moving to Scotland? Uh-huh. You're not gonna tell him this is stupid? No. Can I tell you this is stupid? <laughs> no. I wonder what Scotland's gonna be like. Huh. I'll show you. I have informative video. That's Greg playing golf. Exactly. Now add a couple castles and a lake with a monster. Pete, did I move my head that time? No. Does he really think he can become a pro? Yes. That little girl's got a better swing than he does. What little girl? Wind it back. How about that time? No. <laughs> Okay, I have an idea, but it's bad and it's wrong. How can I help? <laughs> well, I uh, guess this is the last time we'll be uh, playing together for a while. Yeah. Next time we play, you'll be a big hotshot professional golfer. All right. And I'll be Lord King of the Moon. <laughs> Cute. And each morning, I'll bring the dawn by riding across the sky in my flaming chariot. Okay. I get it. You don't think I have a shot at going pro. And from my chariot, I'll bring the rain by peeing over the edge. That's enough. Five bucks a hole, double on carryovers, pretty pay triple. Lord King of the Moon accepts your wager. Hey, guys. Uh, hi. Where's Jane? Oh, Jane couldn't make it. This is Tiffany. The starter sent her over to join us so we'd be a foursome. This is my husband, Greg, and this is Pete. Nice to meet you, Tiff. It's Tiffany. A tiff is a small argument. So it is. Got it. <laughs> she adorable? Yeah, the, the, the kid's gonna slow us down. I know, honey. But just think, one day when she grows up, she'll be watching the senior tour on television, and she'll be able to say, I played with Greg Montgomery. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tiffany, why don't you uh, go ahead and tee off first? Lay into it, Tiffany. Oh, uh, honey, th uh, there's, a, there's a closer tee up front. That's okay. I don't want to slow you down. Okay. <laughs> Weak. <laughs> 
how? I knocked the snot out of that one. How old are you, honey? Nine and a half. Oh. How old are you, Greg? I'm um, shut up and hit. Slow us down, did she? You can pick yours up. Thanks, Stephanie. I'll put mine. You sure? I already won the hole. I'll put mine. But you get so mad when I'll you. I'll put mine. Out. Stand behind me, honey. I'll finish. Would you feel better if I call our bed off? I'll finish, Tiff. This is gonna take long. I have Girl Scouts. <laughs> you can say fudge if it makes you feel better. <laughs> Well, it was kind of nice of Tiffany to climb that tree and get your putter back for you, huh? Surprised it didn't boomerang back to you. Ha. <laughs> uh. oh. <laughs> anyway, now I know what to get you for Christmas. Don't bother. I'm never playing golf again. Oh, you mean as a profession, but you'll still play golf on the weekends for fun, right? I don't, I don't really want to talk about it. Could you just give me a little space, please? Sure, you got it. Greg, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm the worst person in the world. I fed you to a nine-year-old phenom. You never had a chance. Please forgive me. What are you talking Greg, about? She's not a regular little girl. She's like a golf Mozart. She's a freak of nature. I found her, and I sicked her on you. Why? Because I didn't want to go to Scotland, which is also my fault. Please don't make me explain. You set all this up? Pack my asbestos pajamas. I'm going straight to hell. You know what, honey? It's okay. No, it's not. I suck! <laughs> No. The whole thing was really stupid. There's no way I was going to be a professional golfer. I know, but it was your dream, Greg, and I crushed it like a bug. You did me a favor. But why do I feel so dirty? You know what? Forget it. Next weekend, instead of me playing golf, why don't you and I spend some quality time together? I don't deserve it. Yeah, that. you do. I've seen Camelot. What ho, fair maiden! I have acquired coin of the realm with which I shall purchase two flagons of mead! <laughs> then perhaps after, thou wouldst lie with me in thy father's Volkswagen chariot. It's gonna take a lot of mead, buddy. <laughs> thy wish is my command! Don't even start. <laughs> Shall I waste my breath on a list of desserts, or do you just want the check? Uh, just the check. And some whipped cream to go. <laughs> oh, hey, sir, you dropped your wallet! Hey! Ugh. Sir? Uh, Dharma? Dharma! Stop, police! <laughs> Dharma?
Oh, they, they, they'll take it from here. Would it have killed you to turn around and tell me you stole it? Uh, don't, just, just let it go. I'm sorry, Greg, but the man was rude. Forget something? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Uh, uh, here you go. Thanks. I'll just make an imprint of this on my forehead. I think he wants cash. I, I, I didn't bring any cash. That's him! That's the man! Calm down, sir. We got your wallet thanks to this lady right here. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. I, I'd like to give you a reward. Here's $40. Thank you. Here you go. Was there something wrong with the service? Not enough running, perhaps? <laughs> Use another ten. But we we eat there a lot. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be right back with your mints. <laughs> making out at the restaurant, so I was pretty revved up. Darn doesn't need to know. Well, why don't I just write this up as a citizen's arrest? Cool. Hey, can you put down that I gave Chase and collared the perp? That's how I'll do it. Great. <laughs> hey, I have something to ask you. You and uh, Officer Gorgeous over there, you got something going on? What do you mean? I saw the way he looked at you when you slapped those cuffs on that guy. Darn these are very busy people. Just let them do their job. One moment, sir. How did he look at me? Like he was wishing that you'd put the cuffs on him. Really? <laughs> We've been partners for two years. He's never even seen me out of this uniform. Oh, believe me, he has. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're all done here. Listen, uh, if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. We owe you one. Can you take a peek at your butt and see if Cupid's arrow is sticking in it? Oh, thanks very much, officers. We should do this again. Come on, Dharma. Oh, 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 wait. There is something you can do for me. Did you know she always wanted to do this? No, but that, that's not unusual. <laughs> What the hell is she doing? Oh, that's her main face. And the whole time, I'm thinking that he dropped his wallet. Wow, what an exciting day you had. I know. She was a hero. Excuse me, but before we start pinning medals on her, did anybody stop to think about the real thief? The one who got away. <laughs> Do you know where he's going with this? I think so, but I don't want to ruin it for you. The real thief is a system that oppresses individuals and forces them to steal, and the police are the unwitting arm of this oppressive system. Do you people get what I'm saying? Of course, totally, honey. totally, yeah, totally. Sure. Yeah. So, Abby, I understand you have a birthday coming up. Any, uh, any special plans? Oh, no, I don't think so. Mm. Oh, <laughs> that reminds me. Now, 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 now what's going on? Larry and Dharma are planning my surprise birthday party. <laughs> well, shouldn't you be in there? No, oh, if I rush right in there, Abby's going to get suspicious. Oh. <laughs> Dharma, would you uh, show me how your sink works? <laughs> I never really liked surprise parties myself. Mm. Then you should have Larry throw you one. <laughs> Please let me bake the cake. Why? Everybody loves my cakes. Do you remember the cake you cooked for Abby's 40th birthday party? No. <laughs> Neither does anyone else. <laughs> let me bake the cake. Karma? Yeah? Bill and Ellen are here for you. Oh, I'll be right there. Okay, so I'll bake the cake. You do the guest list. Right. Cool. Let's see. Eggs, flour, butter. Gotta call Dave. Hey, you guys. Hi. 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 Ooh, bulletproof vest. Very sexy. Hi. 
brought you your fake mugshot. Oh, cool. <laughs> wow. Ooh, beautiful frame. Where did you get that? We went antiquing. We, we drove down to Carmel. <laughs> Carmel? Did you stay the night? <laughs> you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> You. Dar Dharma, don't, don't tease people with guns. <laughs> all right, all right, let me handle this. Anything you found here was found without a warrant and is therefore inadmissible. Unless you do have a warrant, in which case, we're house-sitting. It's okay, Larry, these are my friends. What do you mean, your friends? They're cops. <laughs> yeah, and they're my friends. Larry, please don't make a big deal out of this. I'm not making a big deal out of it. If she wants to betray the values that I taught her, if she wants to spit in the face of everything I stand for, that's not a big deal. Mm, maybe we should go. Yeah. No, no, you know what? We should probably go. What's it going to be, Dharma? The people who raised you? Who put a roof over your head for 14 of the 18 years you lived with us? <laughs> <laughs> or the enemies of everything they stand for? Larry, you're wrong about this one. Bill and Ellen are good people. Fine. That's it, then. Let's go, Abby. Very nice to meet you. Remember, peace officer begins with peace. <laughs> so you, uh, met Owen's parents yet? <laughs> Do you believe this? Two years, I'm driving, and then we start sleeping together. To drive. It's cute. You're a couple now. <laughs> Dad, how are you with your dad? Not so good. We're not talking. Anything we can do to help? Well, do you think you could explain to him that you're not part of a conspiracy to suppress the masses on behalf of the multinational fascists who secretly rule the world? <laughs> oh, is that what we do? No wonder we're so tired at the end of the day. <laughs> oh, oh, I know those guys. Can we pull them over? What for? Just to screw with him. You got it. No. What did you do? I didn't do anything. Hey, switch seats with me. Why should I catch a ticket? Because if I get another one, I'm going to lose my license. Come on, switch with me. I don't even have a license. Well, then you got nothing to lose. <laughs> oh, man, are they switching places? Either that or the little one's trying to throw the big one out of the car. Attention seat switchers. Get out of the car and slowly move to the front of the vehicle. Last time I let you drive. This is great. How do you get any real work done? Put your hands on your head. Now put your right leg out. Now put it back in. Now put your left leg out. And shake it all about. He's, uh, he's still pretty upset, huh? Well, he's a Taurus, Greg, and his moon's in Capricorn. I don't need to tell you what that means. No, no. <laughs> You certainly don't. I'll, I'll, I'll go talk to him. You might want to wait until Mercury's out of retrograde. I'll take my chances. <laughs> hey. Hey. What you doing? Jigsaw puzzle. Is that Nixon? Yeah. <laughs> Getting on a helicopter after he resigned in disgrace. <laughs> I love this puzzle. <laughs> Oh, uh, here's, uh, here's, here's somebody's eye. Yeah, is it shifty? Uh, it looks kind of bloodshot. Oh, that's Pat's. <laughs> Listen, Larry, we, we need to talk about the situation between you and your daughter. I have no daughter. Come on, you don't mean that. Damn right I mean it. <laughs> Larry, why is this a problem? You, you had trouble with me because I worked for the government. In fact, I think you called me a mindless zombie of the overclass. Rabbit pit bull of the federales. Postal <laughs> workers are mindless zombies of the overclass. <laughs> My point is, 
once you got to know me, you realized I wasn't the enemy. Why can't you do the same for Dharma's friends? Because they're the police, the steel toe or the jackboot of the establishment. <laughs> uh, uh, given, but, but uh, the, the times, they are a-changing, right? Hey, listen to me, Greg. You weren't there. You don't know what it was like to protest against an unjust war and be beaten by sticks and bitten by police dogs and gassed and tagged and dragged off into jails because your opinions weren't acceptable. All that happened to you? I think so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna change your mind here. What, what, what about Abby's surprise party? What about it? Well, how are you and Dharma gonna work together if you're not talking to each other? I don't need to talk to Dharma. I can throw a party for my old lady all by myself. Okay. Well, guess I better get going. Tried. Taurus. <laughs> Listen. Larry, maybe we should call off the party. Party? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, just tell me you're not gonna make a scene with Dharma. Hey, I won't make a scene. I promise you, if anybody ruins your surprise party, it won't be me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a menace to society. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take it from here, guys. I, I think she just needs a little tough love. Ooh, I promise. <laughs> Good work today, guys. Take care. See you, buddy. Good cop. Good cop. Yeah. Uh, listen, I. I was talking to your dad, and, and believe it or not, some of the stuff he said kind of made sense. I mean, it was all wrapped up in bumper stickers and t-shirt slogans, but, but the guy has been through some stuff. I know, I know. I've heard it all my life. But he's wrong about Bill and Ellen, and that is all there is to it. But aren't you the one who's always saying there is no right and wrong, it's a duality, and dualities are an illusion? How does that apply? You tell me. I didn't even know what it means. <laughs> Miniature golf, Greg. It really made it a special birthday. Oh, you're certainly welcome, Abby. It was fun for me as well. Surprise! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Larry, I'm gonna get you for this. You didn't see it coming, did you? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Where's Dharma? Uh, we should talk about that. Um, uh, be, be right back. Um, she's, uh, she's being pretty stubborn. Um... So she's not coming? Surprise! Oh, jeez! And crackers! It scared the daylights out of me! Oh, happy birthday, Abby! Oh. What's going on? Uh, Norman and Larry are throwing separate parties. Surprise! <laughs> separate parties? Only one of which, for the record, was a surprise. Way to go, living room! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Can I have your attention? The kitchen party is now serving a delightful 1984 Bordeaux. And Greg, your parents are here. <laughs> Honey, isn't this a little silly? Look closer, Abby. It's insane. <laughs> no, it's perfectly reasonable. Everyone's welcome to go to Larry's party. They just have to get their hands stamped in order to come back to my party. <laughs> Don't mean my party. I'll be right back. Hold on, Blondie. You're cool. <laughs> this punch is delicious. You're right. It does taste a little like punch. <laughs> Larry, hey guys. Hi. Hello. Maybe we should call a truce and have just one party. So there is another party. No. Yes. Uh, does that one suck too? <laughs> Come on, we're being childish. Let's have just one party for everybody. Fine. In the kitchen. Larry. We got punch. We got pretzels. 
We can make toast. <laughs> but I've got birthday cake, Chinese food, and three kinds of pasta in the living room. Oh. <laughs> More. No. And tell your people not to come crawling to me when they want something toasted. <laughs> Is that the punch from Larry's party? Yes, why? No reason. <laughs> Get the camera ready, we're gonna be rich. Hey, hey, what a, what a surprise. Well, we were working, but we just wanted to drop by and give this to Dharma's mom. Dharma told us how much she likes antique quilts. Hey, look who's here! Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks for inviting us. Oh, uh, no problem. Listen, we might have a little bit of a situation here. Hey! What the hell are they doing here? Larry, let's not do this. No, I want an answer. I invited them to my party. You invited them to my house. And the only way cops come into my house is the regular way, with a warrant and a battering ram. <laughs> They're not real cops, Finkelstein. Come on, officers. Take it off. Take it off. <laughs> Larry, can we just drop this right now for Abby's sake? Fine. Do you want these people in your home? Well, Larry, they seem so nice. That's it, then. My whole family's turned against me. You got short memories, people. Well, you know what? Larry Finkelstein doesn't forget. I don't forget the cruelty and the injustice and the cruelty and... Larry? Oh, Dad? Are you all right? I can't breathe. Somebody call an ambulance. No. We'll take him in the squad car. Not the squad car. <laughs> Mr. Finkelstein, let us help you. On three, ready? One, two, three. Passive resistance. Passive resistance. <laughs> um, go with your mom and dad. We'll be right behind you. You'll never take me alive! Here, take my dress! It has magical powers! I'm so sorry, Dad. I shouldn't have invited Bill and Ellen. No offense, guys. It's okay. I was just being a big jerk. No, I'm the one who should be sorry. I've been so pig-headed. No offense. That's okay. I don't want you to just think of me as a man who stood stubbornly by his principles, but as a compassionate, loving man. A man who was open to change and who accepted people who were different than himself, even though they abused and trampled his rights, he will be missed. Oh, Larry, you're not dying. Larry Finkelstein was a family man, a good provider. None of your business, how. And now... No, oh, Larry! Dad! Can I say something? Please stop breathing! Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's much better. Oh. Is it okay for you to eat that? Yeah, as long as your mother doesn't find out. Hey, what's the matter? Is the boss watching? Load up the onions. Oh, jeez. Larry. You called me dad when you thought I was gonna die. I know. It's kind of nice. You know, if you don't overdo it. Don't worry. You'll always be my Larry. Bill and Ellen. Hey, Mr. Finkelstein, how you feeling? Much better, thank you. Turns out it was gas. <laughs> really? Hey, can you guys do me a favor? Sure, what do you need? Come on, Larry, get in the car. What? Trust me, it'll be worth it. <laughs> Edward, are you speedy? I don't think so. Well... Oh, that's absurd. Edward, do something. Uh, here, here, here. Here's oh. here's a hundred dollars. Tuck it in your bra and flirt a little.
I stubbed my toe. I'm gonna oh. take the eye patch off. Oh, Greg! <laughs> then you're just a naked guy with a stuffed parrot on his shoulder. All right, all right. I'll put it back on. But you have to slow down. Okay, but promise on your honor there'll be no monkey business. I, I swear! <laughs> you swear on your honor! Ah, pirates have no honor! Mm. Ooh, that's quite a bird you've got there. Thank you. And I like your parrot, too. <laughs> you drag us to this third world petri dish be patient it grows on you oh i'll bet it does well couldn't we at least find a clean table not here Dharma, i think i saw a board of health notice out front you probably did Dharma, i cannot possibly stay here hang on hang on for what hey good afternoon ladies Oh. oh. Yeah, the specials are on the board. I'm sure they are. Get back, Loretta. <laughs> Stop it. Still want to leave? Well, we're here. <laughs> oh, this is bad karma. I'm going to get pinched in Italy. <laughs> I must say, I do think it is a bit inappropriate for a group of married women to be ogling an, uh, admittedly magnificent young man. Kitty, I love Greg, and there will never be anyone else for me. But if I'm not free to appreciate a handsome man, then I'm not free to appreciate a beautiful sunset, or a magnificent painting. Or that ass. <laughs> or those arms. Oh, those smoky eyes that seem to burn into the depths of your soul as if they knew exactly what you had been missing all these years. Whoa, who ordered the ugly truth? Kitty, is there something you'd like to share with us? Yeah, aren't you getting everything from Edward you need in the bedroom? Isn't that a rather personal question, Dharma? Oh, yes. Well, you might say that uh, after a certain time, the dance does become... The routine, and one can do the steps in one's sleep. And to be frank, occasionally one does. You know, if you're looking for a way to spice things up, maybe I can help you out. Kitty. Oh. <laughs> I keep a very detailed journal of everything Greg and I do in the sack, and I'd be happy to lend it to you. Well, I am right in the middle of Angela's ashes, but as soon as I finish that, it will be my next read. I... Jane, are you all right? She's fun. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you want to go out for souvlaki? No, no, Jane. I got a situation here. You do know that by souvlaki I meant Greek waiter, but I know. I just can't. What's wrong? I'm going through my sex journal for Kitty. Crossing out things that might kill Edward? <laughs> when I started to notice something. On the 11th of every month, Greg surprises me in the shower and we have amazing, wonderful sex. Yeah, so? Okay, check this out. And this was not easy to figure out. We have fun with food sex every time there's a space shuttle launch. <laughs> Maple syrup, whipped cream, loaf of bread. What did he do with a loaf of bread? Dharma sandwich. <laughs> Don't you see, Jane? There's a pattern here. Wait a minute. Everything you guys do is planned out months in advance. I don't plan out sex. I'm a free-range chicken. <laughs> but Greg, look. Are you going to say something to him? Oh, I can't say anything until I'm absolutely sure. How are you going to find out? <sighs> Science, Jane. Science. Dharma? Yeah? Okay. Is that, is that fun for you? 
Oh, yeah. You shivered me timbers. Are you sure? Because you, you seem like you weren't really into it. No, no, no. I always love Pirate Night. Because I can drop the whole buried treasure. No, thing. that's my favorite part. Okay. okay. The X could mark a different spot from time to time. What? Nothing. Set on the parrot. <laughs> Hey, is Stavos getting a little hippie, or is it the pants? Jane, focus. My sex life is in crisis. I don't understand why you're so upset. Nothing's really changed. Are you kidding? How would you feel if you were 99% sure you were going to have sex on the beach tonight? Sweaty. A little nervous. <laughs> I'm just saying there's things we're better off not knowing. Like what? Like, would it ruin it for you if you found out that Stavros was a doctor back home and he was just working here until he got his American license? Are you saying Stavros is smart? He's a surgeon. You take that back. He's dumb and hunky and you know it. See, nothing's changed, but now it doesn't work for you, right? No, it doesn't. Why would you do that? Just trying to make a point. Stavros, come here. Where is my medulla oblongata? Coming right up. We make fresh for you. <laughs> you scared the crap out of me. So the doctor says, kiss you, Mrs. Johnson. I shouldn't even be doing this. <laughs> That's not the way I heard it. The way I heard it, the woman's name was Mrs. Taylor. Really? And how'd that one go? Well, there was this woman, Mrs. Taylor, and she goes to visit her gynecologist. Would you two stop? It's the same damn joke. Jiminy Christmas. What crawled into your pup tent? You're not still bent out of shape because I beat you, right? No, I don't care about that. So I didn't cheat. I said I didn't care. Well, except on 14, but you knew that. Pete. Well, where's that ball you lost in the woods? I don't care about the golf. It's Dharma and me. We're just having a little trouble. It's, it's not important. What kind of trouble? Your house looks clean. <laughs> it's personal, all right? Ah, uh, the honeymoon's over, huh? No, we still have sex all the time. It's just the last couple of weeks, she seemed detached. But you still have sex all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and your house is still clean. <laughs> Can we please not talk about this? Hey, look, son. I've been married a long time uh, to your mother. <laughs> and one thing I've learned is that passion comes and goes. And when it goes, you've got to stay the course. Stay the course? Stay the course. Do your duty as a husband, and someday her passion will return. How long does that take? I'll let you know. <laughs> this is Mrs. Taylor. She's up in the town. Hi. Hey. For you. Thank you. This is unexpected. What's the occasion? No occasion, just because I love you. Wow, this is so spontaneous of you. <laughs> hey, you know what I was thinking? How would I know what you were thinking? <laughs> Why don't we take a little drive, maybe down the coast, get some linguine at that little place on the pier? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, it would be. And maybe afterwards we can take a walk down by the water. Make love on the beach? See, you well, did know what I was thinking. I'll get the blankets. Oh, God, when will this nightmare end? <laughs> so you had sex on the beach? Mm-hmm, and it was really romantic. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what should I do, Abby? Greg has scheduled every moment of our sex life. Well, not consciously, Dharma. It's not his fault. It's just his nature. Come on. Are you telling me Greg is pre-programmed to sip champagne out of my belly button every time PBS has a fundraising drive? <laughs> Looks that way. Should I say something to him? <laughs> what would you tell him? 
I don't know that it's hard to get all worked up about a guy sucking on your toes when you know he's only doing it because his car got waxed. <laughs> Those don't sound like helping words, Dharma. Well, isn't there anything I can do? Forgive me for suggesting behavior modification, but maybe there's a way that you could gently sway him from his schedule. If that doesn't work, then you find a way to love him, flaws and all. Oh, no, Jean, I can't tonight. It's movie makeout night. Whew. No, I can't say anything to him. I might traumatize him. I care. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna try some subtle behavior modification. It's Dharma, movie starting. Oh, coming! I gotta go. <laughs> Sorry, phone call. That's okay. We've got all night. <laughs> Were you, uh, were you cooking something? No. <laughs> Stay the course, son. Stay the course. Come here, you. Love him, Dharma. Flaws and all. I'm telling you, Pete, I'm doing everything I can, but it just keeps getting worse and worse. Last night, I swear, she took a bath in sour milk just so I would leave her alone. Did you? Of course not. I, I love her. I, you know, stayed the course. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but... Your woman makes love to you every night and she's just going through the motions. That can only mean one thing. She's covering up an affair. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yo, buddy, a guy's wife makes love to him every night, but she's bored from the poke to the smoke. <laughs> she's cheating on him. Really? <clears throat> How about you? Your wife's doing you every night, but she's bored from the chitty to the bang bang. <laughs> Sounds like a classic case of marital infidelity. Thank you. <clears throat> and what do you think? Ta, runway, ta, tai, tai. Yo, why you? Don't you tell about your ass, huh? Someone else is cooking your old lady's duck. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I, I can't believe that. Not, not Dharma. I'm going home. Hey, that's what with you, huh? You don't want any oh? Best to call first. You don't want any nasty surprises. <laughs> Hey, this person, you know? Probably it's someone you know. Thank you. Now I'm going to hear you. What? I'm not going to hear you. I'm not going to hear you. Dharma? Hey. Where have you been? I stopped and had a beer with Pete. Listen, is there anything that you and I need to talk about? What do you mean? Come on, something's going on. You figured out what I've been up to, huh? I'm not sure. Why don't you tell me? Look, it's not your fault. I'm the one with the problem. But I'm afraid if I go over the details with you, it's just going to make you feel worse. <laughs> How can you be so casual about this? It's not the end of the world. I mean, it's not like it was premeditated. So we're just supposed to go on like nothing's happening? Honey. We could talk about this all night, but we both know what's coming next, so why don't we just get to it? Where are you going? I want you to meet someone. I can't, I can't, I can't do this. Oh, Father Christmas, Mama Cass, drop your pants, I'll spank your... Greg?
can't believe you're asking me that. Why are you dressed like a cheerleader? Because every time you get your alumni newsletter, you like to play big man on campus, and I thought the outfit would help. How did you know about the newsletter thing? I told you, I figured out your schedule. Is, is that what's been going on? Yeah, what did you think had been going on? Um, nothing. Or that, I, I kind of thought it was that, I wasn't sure. Don't worry, I'll get used to it. I mean, it's not like you were doing it on purpose. Wait, you think what I was doing was unconscious? What do you think I am, some kind of freak? So you actually sat down one day and made up that schedule? Oh, God, no. It took weeks. Why? Because when... When we got married, I figured you were, you know, a little more advanced, maybe, than me. And, and, and I had to come up with a way to keep you, you know, interested. What? A guy like me goes out with Allison's and Emily's and Catherine's, and, and you're a Dharma. It was a little intimidating. Get out of town, really? Really? Wow. You'd kill an Emily now. Listen, I know that I should have, uh, I should have given this up a long time ago, but, it, you know, it was put a lot of work into it, and it was kind of doing the job. <laughs> What do you say we toss the map and go a little off-roading? Absolutely. But uh, can we start tomorrow? Because that jewelry thing's kind of working for me. I know, I look pretty cute, don't I? Oh, yeah. And then, did you buy it or rent it? Oh, no, I rented it. Oh, we should buy it. Uh, we'll save money in the long run. <laughs> it's in the doctor's office, right? Now, excuse me, gentlemen. I'll have you know, my wife was not having an affair. She was just distracted because she figured out that I schedule each and every sexual move I make. <laughs> You didn't consider that, did you? I guess we're the idiots, huh? So anyway, Mrs. Taylor's up in the store. Come in. My, my, my. I didn't know you delivered. So now what do I do? You told me I wasn't allowed to take off the apron. I also told you not to speak. Okay. Uh, what do, you, do you want me to go out and come back in again? Yes. Uh, Kitty. What? Am I supposed to have the baklava with me? Yes. Come in. My, my, my. I didn't know you delivered. What's the baklava for? 